last video it seemed like four winches came together so smoothly, but this is one of the side quests that I omitted from that last story. Like many adventures, this one began with a cascading series of failures. Normally the force sensor, the load cell, would prevent the winch from running when there isn't a sufficient amount of counterweight to keep the cord from getting kind of tangled up in the mechanism, but I had momentarily configured the winch such that the force sensor wasn't responding fast enough to actually serve that purpose, and here we are. I assumed the tangle wasn't a big deal, but after getting the winch back together it just wasn't operating, so I had to take it apart again and actually go into the motor's gearbox, and then I found this gear just split in half. This started with a motor that was already weak for multiple reasons. It had probably been damaged a little bit during shipping, so it seemed to have a slightly wobbly shaft. I had also used this motor for some early experimentation with the winch spool attached directly to the motor, which was probably not so good for it. But perhaps most incriminating of all, when I had this gearbox open earlier to inspect it after some of the previous issues, I re-lubricated it using some lithium grease that might not be compatible with the one nylon gear in the assembly. So this gearbox had multiple reasons to fail, but I think the actual failure here is something that uh, still surprised me. So here with the gearbox open, you can see it's got one output shaft, which has a bearing at one side and a bushing at the other side, and a single um, metal spur gear. Then there's an intermediate shaft with a metal spur gear, uh, like the other attached using a metal key. And then there's a plastic gear, I assume nylon, which is attached using a pin, which appears to have some heat damage along one side. This intermediate shaft is supported with a bushing at each end. So I'm not sure why they would be using a single plastic gear in a gearbox that otherwise is made of metal gears. The only thing I can come up with is that they needed a helical gear in order to mesh with the worm gear in this assembly, and it might have just been too expensive to machine a helical gear, so they used an injection molded plastic part. So here, after getting the schmoo off the gearbox and taking a closer look at the gear under the microscope, you can see really clearly that it splits along pretty much exactly where that pin was inserted through the gear. And it looks like the pin was forced in during manufacture and then kind of melted over with some kind of hot tool. And this process seems really dodgy, like it seems like it must have weakened the gear quite a lot. And it looks like it was melted kind of haphazardly, like you can even see a lot of trapped debris in the hot end right there. There's some additional grinding visible on the gear where the worm gear ate away at the nylon gear, but that's only visible on one of the two halves, so it looks like that happened probably shortly after the two halves of the gear separated and became kind of lodged in other parts of the gearbox. So at this point I was worried that I had designed my winch around an kind of a fundamentally unreliable gearbox assembly. And it turns out this gearbox is a fairly generic design. If you look on eBay or AliExpress, if you look for, say, 24 volt motors in the 200 RPM range, then this is a pretty common style of gearbox to find. I originally bought these motors via AliExpress from this company here, Tsiny. Tiny motor. I looked around for other sources. I ended up ordering one of exactly the same gearbox from the same vendor on AliExpress, which would take a while to get here. But then I also found what looked like the same gearbox from other manufacturers, including one that was available with faster shipping for maybe $10 more. Once the other motors arrived, uh, some variation was certainly noticeable. Uh, the motor that I got as a replacement from the same manufacturer wasn't quite as bad as the original, but it did show some signs of a uh, somewhat similar kind of um, hot and debris covered tool being used to uh, kind of close over the area of the gear around the pin. Okay, so I know there's a bunch of schmoo going on there, but I'm pretty sure that's already evidence of the same like terrible melty pin hack job that the manufacturer put in the previous gear. So I I think I'm going to expect winches 0, 1, and 2 to all break in the same way at some point. And then the slightly more expensive gearbox that I ordered from the nearby distributor um, did look to be the same design, but the gear seemed to be uh, slightly less damaged still than the other motors I'd seen. So that's the motor that I have in winch number three right now. And maybe winch three will last a little longer since I don't think it has the same problem. While I was waiting on these replacement motors to arrive, I did make an attempt at uh, fabricating my own replacement gear using 3D printing and plastic. It probably would have been ideal to 3D print in nylon, but I wasn't really set up for that around here. I tried 3D printing it in PETG. 
That lasted about a day, but then the gear just ground away against the metal worm gear. This was an interesting exercise though because I wasn't really sure how to take a gear that existed in the physical world and reverse engineer it back to a 3D model. I found some procedures for if you had designed a gear, this is how you would, you know, measure it by placing metal pins in the gear teeth and then measuring across them with calipers, for example. But in terms of reverse engineering just an existing you know, even broken gear back to a 3D model. I tried different approaches, but actually the approach that I ended up using was to just look at gear catalogs and sort of guess that this was a fairly standard size and then kind of figure out the dimensions by rolling the gear across a piece of paper after coating it with ink. So I used that to measure the helix angle and to kind of double check the other dimensions. But uh, the module, which is the kind of fundamental measure of the distance between teeth, uh, I just had to kind of guess that that was an even number here and that worked out. So there isn't really that much of a point to this video. You know, I tried building my own replacement to this gear, kind of failed. Uh, I am curious if any of you have built replacement gears for similar situations and had more success at it. I think clearly if I had um, like a full metal machine shop here, I could build something durable. But I am curious what approaches you might recommend, um, perhaps other 3D printed materials, um, sort of small viable home sh machine shop techniques for making a gear like this, perhaps even casting techniques. Um, let me know in the comments if you have any ideas for how you would fix this problem. And then it seems like of the several motors I have here, I, I have three winches that are still in operation that seem to be working fine that could have this problem, but I don't actually know yet until I, you know, disassemble them. And it's actually fairly involved and somewhat destructive to fully disassemble the winch down to this gearbox. So I think I'm just going to let them run until they have a problem and, re you know, cross that bridge when I come to it. So I guess the I guess the moral here is, well, if you do have these particular gear motors in your life, um, it might be worth opening them up and checking the quality of the gear attachments to see if they're likely to fail in the same way. And I think in the future, um, as compelling as it is to just look for kind of off-the-shelf parts, I really have not been um, happy with the price-performance ratio of these gearboxes. So in the future, I probably will actually be more inclined to use just um, like a, a brushless motor and design my own gear reduction for robotics projects like this. So uh, this was a little bit more of a kind of rambly aside than my usual kind of polished videos, but I hope uh, that was still interesting. Uh, let me know what you thought, and as usual, a uh, big shout out and thanks to everyone who supports the channel, either by sending me things to take apart, by uh, sharing my videos or live streams with their friends, and especially folks who uh, support me via Patreon and, you know, helps me pay the shop rent and, uh, you know, keep providing for myself so that I can keep bringing you interesting content. So if you like this stuff, then that's, um, that's one of the best ways to help, uh, you know, help me continue providing something interesting and perhaps inspiring and perhaps just like a virtual hacker space. So thanks again. Happy hacking, folks. I'll see you next time.